friends if you watched my last video you know that I recently bought a loaf pan let me grab it <clears throat> I just made bread the other night okay so this is the loaf pan that I bought it was small it was $11.99 originally I got it for three dollars well then I went into Target and I still have the gift card um, that we are using and so I saw this little loaf pan um, and it's the silicone one and I've never actually baked with one of these so I went ahead and snagged it using my gift card um, and then I remembered that the Ross here in Hawaii is so good now I said in my last video that savers prices have been outrageous and so I thought I would just run in and check like just to see because I needed to get a few more things um, and I thought maybe it might be cheaper. Plus, we had to go to the doctor today. Um, the girls were sick. We all kind of had like this cough. And so like our throats have been, it's just a mess. So anyways, I went into Ross and I was like, I'm going to look around to see what I could find. And everything I bought today was marked down, <clears throat> which is crazy. Um, and super affordable. So the first thing I got was like these pack of wooden spoons. Um, because I have some of our baking goods, like these, um, that I enjoy, but we left some of our bags with my family in Louisiana and then some with our friends in Texas, not thinking we were going to get into our apartment as quickly as we did, and so I need to cook. So I went ahead and grabbed these. These were on sale for $3.99. They were originally $5.49. Um, can't go wrong with that. And then we were at the thrift store looking at these little egg cartons and they were four or five dollars each from Savers. I didn't see any at Goodwill, but I did find them at Savers. But at Ross, brand new, they were on sale for a dollar ninety-nine. Like, are you kidding me? So I snagged two of these. Um, because I'm all about like shrinking spaces, maximizing our little space. We are trying to live minimalistic like realistic minimalism so I don't know I read this book now I'm gonna start I read this book and by read I mean I listened to a book called messy minimalism and so it's like this girl that's talking about like her life and how um, she is aspiring to be a minimalist but like with life and so not being over the top all of that to say I listened to this book and it really changed my mindset on minimalism and how it, it can be achievable you should listen to it if you haven't it's called messy minimalism or read it if you prefer to read um but anyways okay so i grabbed these hangers um they're pant hangers there's three of them and then they have like three little things i can hang on um and they were 2.99 and then just an organizer again a lot of this stuff we have packed away in Louisiana or Texas, but it's going to be a while before those things get brought here. Um, so just an organizer. It was on sale for $3.99. And then a small cutting board because I have a really big cutting board, but like I bake bread and we make, I make fresh bread all the time. And so it's just easy to like pull out a small cutting board um, to chop up my bread. Anyway, so this one was on sale for $3.49. So everything I bought today, except for my hangers, were marked down, which is incredible. Why would you not do that? So anyways, um, and then I got a super sweet letter in the mail today from my aunt. And she sent me my great-grandmother's recipe for bread that she used to make. And so that was just fun in itself because I'm constantly making bread and trying new bread recipes. So I thought that would be a fun little thing to try out. So I'm going to attempt the bread um, and I thought I'd just take you guys along on that journey as well um, and just record myself making my great grandmother's bread or the recipe that she used. So that's fun. So stay tuned for that. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Brittany Tawai. I'm happy to have you here. I'm a mama of three and on my channel you're going to see things like our family vlogs, browse with me as we explore the island of Hawaii and thrift with me because who doesn't love thrifting so be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a video i just made my great grandmother's yeast bread so a little history on it which is just kind of fun um my aunt wrote me this sweet letter um after watching one of my youtube videos um she wrote me this letter and said like she saw that i enjoyed baking so she wanted to send me a recipe that my great-grandmother used to make and 
Um, she said it was in a cookbook from the Gideon, Missouri, which is the town, Gideon, Missouri, um, Assemblies of God Church that my great-grandmother went to. And it was a cookbook that was written in 1972, which is just, like, that's just cool in itself. Um, and then inside the cookbook, she had, like, a name written down next to the yeast recipe. And um, so my aunt calls my grandmother, asked my grandmother, like, who is this person? Um, and my grandmother said it was a lady that my great-grandmother used to take care of, and she would make these rolls. So then I called my grandmother to ask her, like, do you remember what they taste like? Just just reminiscing. And one thing kind of random, but I love to listen to stories, especially stories of like my grandmother, my parents, my great grandparents. Like it's just fun to me to hear those stories and the history of that. So like to have this one, it's a handwritten recipe from my aunt. So that's just special to me because I like when people like handwrite things because this is like passed down in a way. Um, so it's just super cool that like this was my grandmother's yeast recipe and then she had like a special name beside it and so anyways I called my I called my grandmother and asked her like you know did you enjoy them and she said um, they had a large family so when my grandmother would make it my I'm sorry when my great-grandmother would make the recipe that she would like cook half and then like cover the other half and leave it in the fridge for a while and then she would take it out and cook it days later and then you'd have like two sets of dinner rolls um so what I did today was I went ahead and made one big batch of dinner rolls and then I just rolled the rest into a loaf and made a loaf just to give that a try um and honestly y'all it is so good um super fluffy I was impressed and I'm like man I'm so glad I know how to bake now like I don't know I just really enjoyed it but I hope you guys enjoy my great-grandmother's bread recipe so here it is step number one is to scald the milk which ultimately means you heat the milk until it starts to bubble around the edge then remove it from the heat Once you remove it from the heat, you go ahead and mix in your butter, your salt, and your sugar. Mix until the butter is completely melted. Here, we add in the instant yeast, mix it with lukewarm water, and let it dissolve. After it's fully dissolved, you're gonna go ahead and mix that into your milk mixture until it is nice and smooth. Then we're adding two cups of flour just to get it going. Mix that in until all the clumps are gone and it looks nice. Then add in another two cups of flour and mix away until it's nice and blended. At this point, you're gonna see it start to come together. Just continue to stir, and once it gets pretty incorporated, we're gonna add in the last little bit of flour. Once you add in that last cup of flour, you're gonna need to get in there with your hands and start kneading the dough or mixing the dough around before you throw it on the table to knead. When you're ready, go ahead and transfer the dough to a lightly floured surface and start kneading. Feel free to add more flour when needed if your hands are sticking or if the dough is sticking to the table too much. Um, you're gonna just keep kneading until it starts to get smooth and elastic. I would say I probably kneaded the dough about 150 times. Once the dough is smooth, go ahead, put it in a bowl, cover it, let it sit. Once it's doubled inside, you'll then punch out the gas 
and you're ready to start rolling into rolls. Now this is a technique I've never done, but I think it's called like a pinch and twist or something. I don't know, I'm making that up. Anyways, ultimately you pinch the dough together, twist it off, and then you just roll it into your balls, place it in your tray, and just keep going. Do the same, try to make them all around the same size. Um, you'll see that mine change. What I usually do is lay out the dough, press it flat, then I divide it into equal pieces, and then I roll into balls. Um, that's what I usually do, but I wanted to try this because that's what my grandmother said that my great grandmother did. So here you can see they're not super consistent and with the leftover dough, I just went ahead and made a loaf. Now we're gonna cover it, let it sit for another 45 minutes or so until it doubles in size and then it's ready to go in the oven. I've preheated the oven to 350 and we're gonna let it bake for about 25 minutes or until golden brown. Oh my gosh. That looks magical. Okay, we just tasted the loaf and now we're gonna taste um, the rolls. Now, here's the thing. I didn't spray my pan um, and I didn't put down parchment paper or anything and so it definitely stuck to the bottom. Um, not in the bread pan. The bread pan, it came up fine, but in the glass dish that I made the rolls in, it stuck really bad. So I, I would recommend spraying the bottom, um, which we'll make them again and just see what happens. You should definitely give this recipe a try, and if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching.